Have you ever heard someone say, history repeats itself? This comes up quite frequently when researching Christopher Nolan movies. Are you watching closely? They're oddly heavy, and you almost need to take a day off to let them sink in before you can move on to the next film. But why is that? What makes them so unique? And here we go. What makes Nolan's film so unique is that he disguises many clues inside a important cinematic device called motifs. A motif is a repeated pattern used to support the theme of a film, like the totems in the Inception that represent reality. So a totem, you need a small object, potentially heavy, something you can have on you all the time. All the various scenes of duplicity in the prestige. Don't forget your hat. Well, which one is mine? They're all your hats, Mr. Angel. These items may seem symbolic, but Nolan takes it a step further. He doesn't merely just use motifs to support a theme. What he actually does is dangle a clue right in front of your face. Look closer. The effect is that it both intrigues and confuses the audience. And he does this by presenting information with a veiled context. I planted an idea. A simple little idea that would change everything. Critical clues that Nolan peppers in at any moment. So Why, how does he do it? He uses a double. No, 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 no. It's too simple. This is a complex illusion. He spreads them out enough to disguise the revelation. My brother. And the second and the third and fourth time you watch his films, you pick up a little things on the way. I love you. Well, sometimes it's not true, and today you don't mean it. Maybe today you're, you're more in love with magic than me. Like this scene in Insomnia. The clear cause of death was herniation of the brain stem due to intracerebral hemorrhage. Being to death. The protagonist, Detective Dorma, inspects a murdered girl's body. When Dorma finishes his inspection, he says, He crossed the line, and he didn't even blink. Why is this moment so important? Dorma takes off his gloves and describes someone who crossed the line and never you came back. Come back from that. The opening credits show fibers drenched in blood and it drips until we see an unknown person wearing a latex glove. Not until the end of the film that we come full circle and we work out that the man who crossed the line is Dorma himself. And those hands at the gloves at the beginning of the film were dormers. This is just one example, but no one frequently layers clues like motifs, flashbacks, and key inserts throughout his narrative. It's not Morse, Murph, it's binary. Thick is one, thin is zero. Coordinates. Christopher Nolan admits that when he writes a film, he'll make sure to write it what it's on film. I approach the structure from a very mathematical and geometrical point of view. A lot of diagrams, a lot of careful planning. But then you sit down and you write the script the way the audience is going to be receiving that information. The hope is that in that way, you're actually creating a cohesive and an organic rhythm and story movement. Dream within a dream, huh? I'm impressed. And so the structure I settled on is based on a musical structure called the shepherd tone, which is a musical illusion whereby you can keep climbing up the scale, but you never seem to go out of reach, if you like. And I wanted to try and apply that to screenwriting. No! If you were to graph out a diagram that illustrates a, a Nolan film, it would look like something like this. The best this. way to draw it is as a hairpin. That's basically the end of the movie. I've seen one before, many, many years ago. And this reveals one of the main devices that he uses in his storytelling, a book ending. 
This is where a beginning and end share something identical. What? It can be dialogue. Are you watching closely? Are you watching closely? Props. Time will run differently for us. Yeah. Nobody believed me. But I knew you'd come back. Color schemes. Just an anonymous room. There's nothing in the drawers. It's a look anyway. Nothing except the Gideon Pipe. Bible. Or an entire scene. You want to know who he was? I know exactly who he was. He was the Batman. No one's ever going to know who saved an entire city. They know. It was the Batman. Everything comes back full circle. Remember, history repeats itself. What else does Christopher Nolan do so well as a filmmaker? Tell me in the comments. This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. We've come full circle. Did history repeat itself?